<laughs> Welcome back to the MVH Podcast, Money Buys Happiness, Season 4, Episode 3. We are here with our lovely guest, Nicole Servinas. What's up? What's hey, guys. Up? How are so you? Nice to see your faces. To We've been trying to do here. this. We've been trying I to do know, this. It's been I a know. while. Yeah, it's been a while in the making, but we got you here. We got you here during some exciting times. Yep. Yes. Uh, lots to talk about today. Um, it's exciting because as we're talking about before we got on mic um we haven't really had somebody in your industry yet um in your field and with some of that like background with knowledge that experience and, too yeah, yeah yeah so it's cool we're excited to have you on and just chat about obviously uh what you've been up to what's coming next the whole big uh, array of things but maybe just intro yourself for someone who may not know you um what you do, who you are, all that good stuff. Sure. Well, my name is Nicole Stravinas, like you said. Born and raised in Richmond Hill. Shout nice. out. Love it. Uh, <laughs> I've been in the TV industry now for about eight years and covered everything from entertainment and lifestyle news. And so, yeah, I, I've always had a passion for journalism and telling stories and sharing stories. And that's kind of why I got into it. Um, I have a BA from Ryerson University and I did an internship there and then shortly after i got hired on at entertainment tonight canada that's where i got my start and i started as a production assistant worked my way up to be a producer yep. and there i worked in uh like sponsorship integration but then i also got to do uh fun red carpets and sit down interviews with a-list celebrities nice, which nice. Is very fun yeah. and uh and yeah i i actually you know you reach a time you feel like you've you've learned as much as you can there course, and you wanted yeah. to move on to something else well, at the same time that I got offered a promotion there, I got um, offered a position as a reporter to do more on-air stuff over at Breakfast Television. So that's why I made the jump. Yeah. And uh, for the last two and a half years, I was uh, their community reporter, yeah. uh, referred to as the Live Eye reporter. Nice. And I was out in the field every day with the community, featuring yeah. different businesses, um, events, things going on in the city. And I mean, along the way, I've gotten to do incredible things from like giving back to, I think that was a, uh, a different portion of my field that I always wanted to dive into. But I, again, with like entertainment, I didn't really get to do that. Yeah. So over at BT, I was able to do that. And we've done like so many like giveaways and things and have helped so many people and gosh, like the reward and the, and to see like the value in the power of media has been really, I've been really lucky, especially over the last few years, like when COVID hit to go yeah. through all of that was a very okay. interesting time. And, and I know we'll, we'll get into yeah, that yeah, further, yeah. For but, sure, for sure. but yeah, and, and now I'm currently doing my own thing and, nice, and nice. moving on to the next chapter in my life. And I'm really excited about it. I want to talk about the, the internship when you, when you first got it, was that, did you know this is something that you wanted to do? I, I kind of looked at your website too, um, your blog page as Creep. well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, he's been known. He's been known. <laughs> you started off, you started off dancing. Yes. Right. So how did you make that transition? How did you know? being on air was something that you wanted to do is that something you saw on tv and you're like yo that's cool like i want to do that were you always just like very um like a social butterfly were you okay with talking on camera stuff like that how did you know that that's something you wanted to do yeah so there's two things that really kind of hit home for me i'll never forget i was in grade five and uh we were at school and all of a sudden we got an announcement uh there's been some devastating news for everybody's safety we're gonna. Uh, we're at, we're calling all your parents right now to send you home. Um, you all need to be home right now. And for those of you who can't, you're gonna sit in the gymnasium together. So my parents uh, came to pick me up, brought me home, and I said, "What's going on?" Like we didn't really know what was going on. It was all mm -hmm. very vague and uh, just. It was a, very concerning. Okay. I've never seen anything like like this before. Yeah. And I mean, I'm you're what 12 years old. Yeah. yeah. And. Um, and yeah, we came home and my mom said, okay, well, like there's something that's happening that's really, really, really sad in New York right now. Yeah. I mm -hmm. don't know if you're like, do you want to see what's going on in the news? Yeah. And I said, yeah, I want to see what's going on. And I opened up and it was the Twin Towers. Yeah. And I remember just like eyes glued to the TV, watching it all unfold, which is like kind of traumatic yeah. to see yeah. at that age. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But at the same time, like, like watching it, I mean, you you think about all the lives and, and the devastation. And at the same time, I was thinking, um, and, and because you're seeing different reports from all over the world, I was like, wow, this is so crazy that everyone is watching this at yeah. the same time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everyone is experiencing this in New York at the same time, and it's affecting people yeah. from all over the world. And I thought to myself, like, the power of media, wow. To be able to share that, to be able to show people, like, 
we're living in a world where that wasn't possible so yeah. many years ago, true, you know? True, and, very true. And that whole thought kind of stuck with me. It really did. Um, and it, and it, it was thinking the whole time is like, how can you, because I've always been raised this way, is like, how can you turn this into a good thing? Like, how, yeah. like by seeing these people, you're calling your neighbor to make sure that they're okay. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, there's so many other relationships and things that stem from that that yeah. aren't necessarily so bad that yeah, bring people together yep. in a positive way. Yep. And so that always stuck with me. And then in high school, when we had our careers class, <laughs> this is like the other end of the spectrum. <laughs> yeah. I was like, nice. I know, like, I love to dance. I love to perform. I love, like, I'm, I consider myself a pretty outgoing person. Yeah. I love interacting with people. I always have, like, yeah. love to be on stage kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Public speaking, the yeah. whole nine. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and then, yeah, so when... So when that class came around and you explore different, you take the test and yeah. you see like the different avenues and, and a journalist was one of them. And I was like, hmm, like, what does that even mean? I don't even know what that really is. Yeah. And then you, I was exploring like media studies and, and all of that. And when I initially, again, wanted to get into journalism, I wanted to be a foreign correspondent. Yeah. Um, that's what I like had gone to school really wanting to, to do because of the 9-11 yeah. that wow. I had witnessed. And I wanted to be on the ground and, and be there with people. But in my mind, I was like, I want to be with the people to help the people. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. then in school, I learned, no, you're neutral. You can't help the people. You <laughs> yeah. stand there as yeah. things are happening around you. You of don't course. help the people. And yeah. I was like, yeah, no, this isn't for me. I'm going to do lifestyle entertainment. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Easy. <laughs> and so that's yeah. how we got there. <laughs> of course. So going in as an intern um, to ET, how mm -hmm. was that? How did you feel? Um, did you have any mentors there? Were you... Uh, uh, looking up to anyone shadowing anyone how was that experience for you oh i was terrified yeah, yeah. Uh, super intimidated for super sure super intimidated sure. oh yeah. my god i was like nervous I, I can't even tell you because so before i even got the internship when i applied i'd always wanted to to work there that was like my dream okay. when i was a kid yeah. i'd watch cheryl hickey yeah and yeah, yeah. i look and rick yeah. campanelli yeah. and be yeah. like oh i want to work with them yeah. like that's my dream to be like them yeah and uh, and then when I had the opportunity to like, they were like, you can apply an intern anywhere you want for half a semester. That's like your credit. I told my professor I wanted to do that, and she said, "You're crazy. That's the stupidest thing yeah. you could do." Come wow. on. She's like, wow. she's like, you're gonna waste your time because you're not gonna get hired on afterwards. So uh, you're gonna be left without a job, and unless like you're okay with that, yeah. then like you should pick somewhere else. Yeah. I was like, really? She's like, yeah, start small. Like, aim for like a local TV station or like a local newspaper. No. Like, like really, <laughs> nah. like think small. Yeah, Classic yeah, yeah. school. And yeah, yeah right. <laughs> and I said, no. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I was like, okay. Course. Like, <laughs> sure, yeah. but no. Yeah. And uh, I applied, and then when I got it, I was like, big yeah, F you. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it was like, well, yeah, because it's like, that's not what you should be telling your kids. And I and I have like had that space of like teaching as well. And it's like. If you dream big, you can do big. Like, yeah. I really believe in that. And for someone to, like, sometimes teachers, educators don't realize the power that they have yep. or the words and advice that they have. Yeah. It's like, and that can change someone's life. Of course. 100%. You know? yeah. So anyway, that, that was that. I'm glad yeah. that I did what I did. <laughs> yeah, and, good choice. Uh, and when I walked in the doors, I mean, everyone was super friendly okay. off the bat. Mm -hmm. I can't even say that. Like, I think uh, it was the first day, I'll never forget this, Rick walked by my desk and said, hey, Nicole, I'm so glad to see you're sitting in this chair. And the reason why is because I want to say like two months prior, it was TIFF. Okay. And I was trying to be the ambitious student running around trying yeah. to get <laughs> interviews, you know, because it's like oh, they had a the theater on our campus. And, and, uh, and I saw Rick. And again, huge fan, right? Yeah. So I like ran up to him on the street like a crazy person. I was like, yeah. Rick Campbell. <laughs> and he turns around and I'm like, I know you're really busy. I just want to let you know, like I applied for an internship at ETC and like, I really hope that I like get the opportunity to work and like learn from you. I think you're awesome. Wow, and, that's amazing. and he was like, sorry, what's your name? Yeah. Shook my hand, took the time, gave me like five minutes of his time. This poor guy is like running around yeah, with his yeah. head chopped off too. Yeah. And, uh, and he said, Nicole, I'm going to remember your name and I have no doubt you'll be, uh, you'll be an intern. And That's my amazing. first day yeah. when I was sitting in the chair, he remembered yeah. my name and came and said hi. And I was like, wow, this is the best yeah. place ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it Freaking here. Freaking out. Yeah, yeah. 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 But, uh, but it wasn't like, 
as glamorous as I thought. I was like, gonna yeah. say, did you yeah. like? No, was no, it, no. Was it everything you <laughs> yeah. made it out to be? No, like, no, no, no. So, eh? <laughs> the, the beginning was rough. Like, yeah. Was it like I coffees? Said, like, was it a coffee run? <laughs> oh yeah. Like, yeah. So I sat right next to the coffee machine, and I was the quintessential <laughs> oh, nice. coffee girl every nice. day. I also nice. broke the fridge. My like my, my first week there, and they oh, were like, wow. "Send this girl home! Like, <laughs> yeah, get her yeah. out of there." No, I was like, I was the. They joked all the time because I was just like the yes girl. Yeah. So. They asked me to do something and I would just find a way to do it. Yeah. From everywhere from like building IKEA furniture for a set. <laughs> wow. Oh, nice. Like mopping the floor. Yeah. Okay. Doing models hair because like it was someone was late yeah, or, someone, or someone yeah. didn't show up. Taking literally the model didn't show up with clothes, but like that she's supposed to bring. Yeah. I took the clothes off my back. That's to wow. <laughs> doing and I sitting there and yeah. I'm like, oh my, like you name it. It was yeah. like, I, I did it. And yeah. and I think they they really respected me for like wanting it so bad and, yeah. and never saying no. Yeah. And so, yeah, it was, it was a really <laughs> interesting time. But yeah, then it was like all those like hardships. Then you, you get the wins, right? Yeah, yeah, you get yeah. like to go to a red carpet or there you get you to go with the sit down with yeah. a with a big celebrity mm -hmm. with like Blake Lively yeah. and like yeah all, all, it's all of that that like made it worth it you're like oh yeah. okay this is why I did all this what was sure. like the first big win for you that you knew like oh. okay I'm, I'm kind of growing here I'm kind of growing this position now first big win or first big event or first big win yeah was an interview with Meghan Markle wow come on so <laughs> But no one knew who she was. Yeah, yeah, at that time. Saying, at that time. I, yeah, like, yeah. But I, saw, I think I saw you throw <laughs> a post a throwback See, on it. I'm just like, when did this happen? Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. So that's we're crazy. sitting around like a pitch table similar to this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like every all the producers around. And where everyone pitches a story or sit down and different stories to tell. And I remember someone had pitched. They're like, oh, some actress, Meghan Markle. She's not Canadian, but like lives in Toronto. Yeah. Shoots this show, Suits. Yeah. Yeah. They're still in their first season. But she's coming out with a dress line from Reitman's or Reitman's, however yeah, people yeah. say it differently. And uh, and they were like, does anyone want to cover this story? And yeah. no one had any hands up. No one said anything. And I was like, I will. I, was like, I will. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they were like, they're like, oh, uh, <laughs> why? <laughs> I was like, I love the show Suits. Like, yeah. I'm such a big fan right off the top. Like, yeah. she's one of my favorite characters. Yeah. Like. Um, I'll do it, I'll do it. And basically, like, so they did it as a throwaway in yeah. case it, my, it was my, my first sit down. Yeah. In case the interview went so badly, they were like, she's nobody, so yeah. we don't have to air it. Like, wow. it's exactly. fine. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's no crazy. pressure, though. So there's no pressure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I go, but I was, but I was nervous because I was such a fan of her, right? You already know yeah. she was. So yeah. I went in and, uh, and we had a sit down interview, and she was wonderful, like, mm -hmm. so down to earth, so kind. And so we were in kind of like a warehouse, like a loft, yeah. where the, she was shooting the collection. Yeah, and there was like construction right above us that was yeah. so loud, like yeah. thumping, similar to this. <laughs> similar, yeah, similar <laughs> like I don't know if this is big this <laughs> fucking, Oh but my god! But okay. it was super yeah. similar, but worse, like banging noises. Yeah. And we had to stop every yeah. time that the noise happened because the microphone of would course. pick it up. Yeah, and we edited it all together and, yeah. and whatnot. And and so um, so yeah, every like any other celebrity, honestly, would have lost their mind For and sure. like got up and walked out and just said like we'll have to pick another day or like, I'm not doing it because yeah. it was every other word. Wow. Yeah. And she just sat there patiently and was like, mm -hmm. should I start there? Or should I go back a sentence? Yeah. I was like, whatever you That's want. Amazing. Like, no. I was like, as if this like of could course. not be more stressful yeah, yeah. than this is happening. Yeah. But she was so gracious about it and so nice and invited us to stay after us and me, my cameraman and I, yeah. we stayed longer. We like, shot the shit Sh and yeah, like yeah, chatted yeah. and yeah. talked about like going on in Toronto and she was asking me about dating and, and I was like yeah the guys suck in Toronto and yeah. she's like yeah don't I know and, <laughs> and she was like actually I'm dating someone who's not from here and I was like oh yeah she's like yeah well it's like super casual so like I don't know if anything's gonna come of it and I was like yeah, yeah. I mean, you could be hopeful like yeah, it's okay that's good yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh like very like casual and then four months later she's holding hands with Prince Harry that's crazy. oh was that it was that close yes. That's it crazy. Like, hey? like, what? And like, so when you saw that, you were like, happening? what? That's who she was talking about. Oh, so that's the guy. Yeah. Yeah. How do yeah. You, yeah. Wow. But so, that was so my first. Ended up being like, a huge win then. Totally. And it's so funny because the executive producer, well, till to, to today, he jokes all the time. He's like, yeah, that's the interview that we use all the time for all our coverage because yeah. she blew up. And they had 
like and a solid 15 yeah. minutes with and it's her you. and it was That's like amazing. it was so funny That's i was amazing. like yep because of me yeah <laughs> so so after that moment did the, what the producers i guess did they start trusting you a bit more to to get out there and yeah, take on stories yeah, yeah definitely it was like little wins yeah it's like you didn't mess this up yeah uh yeah. are we allowed to swear on here yeah of course, of course. okay so my yeah. my producer had said to me before i went out he goes yeah. good luck have fun but don't fuck it up <laughs> <laughs> okay that's great thank you so don't that's like, yeah yeah so that's like constantly in my yeah. head and uh <laughs> and moving forward that yeah. was always in my head yeah. and i was like if i don't fuck it up then of i'll course. get another one <laughs> even um i had a question even looking up to like some of the people you ended up working with right mm-hmm. i mean you saw them on tv and you're like i want to be someone like cheryl hickey or yeah. someone like rick right how was it to finally work with them what were you like was it like a shock kind of were you like nervous uh, or were you like i'm one of them now no never no. one of them yeah. and i still don't <laughs> yeah. don't feel like okay. that they're still like uh very humble elite very, very, very humble very humble no yeah. they, <laughs> they are so humble yeah. yeah so that's why i it was like it was um what's the saying of like they didn't let me down like meeting your heroes type yeah of of course. like yeah. it wasn't yeah. disappointing it was everything you all. thought it would yeah, be type of everything thing. i thought it would be and more um because they are so good at what they do and they work so freaking hard yeah. and they deserve everything that they have and it was so awesome to be able to like not only just like sit and watch and like yeah. learn but like also like work with them and then like as a producer like of i was course. the one telling them like yeah. we're gonna do it this way can you say this again and yeah it, it's crazy it was, just, it was a really it was awesome I, I think back and you take for granted sometimes those little yeah, things. Yeah, definitely. This, these questions are nice. Now to you're retelling. Be asked. Yeah, yeah, you're retelling the story. You you're like, oh shit. I'm like, okay. oh, why did I want to do this again? Like, yeah. why did I get into this? It's really and I'm nice. curious, what like the now being in that environment, that 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 work life. It, it's not I can't imagine that it's nine to five like I, I feel like you're going even, yeah. all the time even right? breakfast like, television right I remember when you first got it we were speaking and I, I yeah, was just Ernest like, was like hey do you want to come out I'm like yeah I gotta wake up in like an like, hour she was like, yeah. <laughs> I think you, you told me your schedule yeah. you're like yeah I'm up from like 3 30 or 4 to like to like the afternoon then you're sleeping again and then you're okay so run us through run us crazy. through a day because I'm actually just curious what that like what a day in the life looks like so at ET, it was different for yeah. sure. You started a little bit late. I mean, I would go in early. That was like a part of the, nice, the grind. Nice, yeah, yeah, like nice. You love show that. up like an hour and a half earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's say I get there around like 7, 7.30, and then I work till probably like 6. And then you have like red carpets and sit downs and stuff yeah. like usually it's happens at night. So yeah. it's so like an all day yeah, thing. Yeah, damn. Um, but with BT, it was like hard in a different way because the hours are so reversed. So yeah. it was yeah. like... Yeah, I'm up at, I was up at like 3.34. And then... This is every morning, Jesus. by the way. This is not yeah. like once a week. Yeah, you know? yeah. And we have like morning meetings. Then I have to drive. I have to get myself ready. So I do like hair and makeup at home. And then I drive to location. And because I was always on location, like yeah. we went everywhere. Yeah, like from anywhere, like yeah. Niagara to like Horseshoe Valley to like Damn. Bowmanville. Like we've gone like everywhere. Mm-hmm. So... It takes time to get there. The good thing is, is there's no traffic in the morning. Of course, morning, so that's kind of five a.m. You're good. But yeah, yeah. and uh, and yeah, then we're live. We were live until ten, and then afterwards meetings, and then I have to plan everything for the next day. So yep. like, then I'm on everybody else's normal schedule. Yeah. So if I'm working with like publicists, Fuck. like they're not their day starts around then or at twelve. Like when my twelve one, when my day is supposed to end, is when they're like on lunch. Mm, so it's wow. like I. I mean, I would try and get as much in as I could till my eyes couldn't open anymore. And then I would like nap for about two or three hours Mm -hmm. and um, and then get up. And then we would do sometimes night coverage where you have to watch a show and like recap it the next day or do junket interviews. And that would happen later on or sometimes on the weekend. So just like all over the place. All over the damn, place. Damn. To be very flexible and adaptable. And I'm just used to being tired all the time, yeah. which is why when you offered me <laughs> an espresso when I walked in, I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So excited. <laughs> so that schedule you were you were doing for what, about two years? Yeah. Just over wow. two years. So okay, so how did you how That's did you why adjust? I look the way that I do? Well yeah, <laughs> like, I wanted to ask you just, just more, more <laughs> like just more like on a personal level, how did you deal with that um, in terms of just balancing life? Like yeah, that's family that's you're, you're on a completely different schedule yeah. than, than everyone else. So how was that? Like how was adjusting to that? hard yeah. yeah really hard was there anything um, you implemented in a routine to try and like you know um, trying to stay more organized i mean and don't make it up right now eh? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, <laughs> no, you can tell us if, it, if you're just <laughs> magically you know what I, I just like i always like 
people have said this to me before. They're like, I just don't understand how you keep going. Yeah. Like I've always yeah. had that mentality since I was a kid. Yeah. Because I was I was always enrolled in like a lot of sports and I was always on the go. Yeah. I kind of just have that in me to just yeah. like keep going, like keep push through. through. Like, yeah. yeah. And so I've always kind of had that mentality. It's yeah. like. I mean, I, s I sleep when I can. I have that <laughs> gift as well, nice. where I could like be sleeping sit sitting up like that. <laughs> um, so that's helpful. <laughs> yeah. But other than that, there's no secrets. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was, no was going to say because like yeah. that's that's tough. Like you're you're waking up every morning that time. It's your schedule. But not only that, you, you have to present yourself, mm -hmm. and you're on television. Like you know what I mean. So was there any days where you're like, fuck, like yeah, I'm done. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'm done right now. Like I can't do this anymore. There are days when I've woken up like well woken up like super sick i've woken up pre-covid okay yeah, yeah, when yeah. you, yeah. <laughs> when you yeah. get cold well, everyone's yeah. like hey wait hold on a second <laughs> no, yeah, yeah yeah there you go uh, pre-covid when like yeah i have a i have a cold and i was supposed to dad yeah, go live that yeah. morning and i was like and they're really good about it too this is the thing i put the pressure on myself of course that's mm -hmm. like is a lot of it yeah. but um but yeah i like felt bad calling in two hours before to be like i can't go like i can't even swallow because yeah. my throat is so swollen so yeah, I just pull myself together and do it. And like, yeah. I like feel like I look like hell that day. And I sounded, <laughs> I sounded like I swallowed a frog, but like, did I make it through? Yeah. Was it, yeah, it yeah. like, was it a really good show? Yeah. And that's why like, I'm, I've always like, when I am ready to say no to something, I consider, am I going to regret it if I do? Yeah. That's the question I always ask myself. And if I say, if it in my head, I'm like, yeah, you're going to be pissed if you didn't do yeah. it. And then I push myself to do it. And then in hindsight, I'm always happy that I do. So mm -hmm. I, I really make sure that I ask myself that question. But like, I've had yeah. a breakup the night before. Yeah. So, Ooh. oh yeah, yeah. this, this is probably the most rough. Morning rough. Morning. Fuck like, everybody, yeah. good morning. <laughs> I hate it. Good fucking morning, this. everyone. That's Be alone crazy. for the rest of your life. This is how <laughs> it's not worth yeah, it. It's not worth it. <laughs> That's crazy. But yeah, and like swollen eyes, like yeah, up yeah. all night crying. And then I'm so lucky like I go into work and my cameraman is like one of my best buddies and it yeah, makes yeah. me laugh and like, I should put my glasses on that yeah. day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm like, yeah, yeah. That's going to be fine. Yeah. Life goes on and you pull yourself together. And, yeah. and that's the thing is like, people don't realize too, is often like when people are presenting on air, uh, they're, you're opening yourself obviously yeah. to a lot of judgment. Yes. And there, I mean, there's always going to be insecurity from the person who's on the yeah. other side being mm -hmm. judged, but you're confident enough in yourself to know that, that like you, you can do it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, the negative words are not going to affect you or change you, what, yeah. why you love what you do. Yeah. And, um, and that's a huge part of it is like a lot of like talent that people don't know, like have their own lives, like outside yeah. of what of you course. see yeah. or what they talk TV, about. Yeah. It's like some people are going through like divorces yeah. or sickness or whatever. And like, nobody knows that. And, show and then you smile. show up yeah. every day so with a smile on your face yeah. and yeah. you like, it's like the saying, the show yeah. must go on. Yeah. That's but, but, exactly but any, it. any days where you're like, not even just like fuck it today, where you're just like, I don't know if this is for me anymore. Like this, maybe this you had a bad industry bad or moment or a bad experience. Because I feel, I, I feel like, know. I mean, what you do is just so demanding. Maybe yeah. it's not so labor intensive. You're not fucking doing concrete, but like, <laughs> you know what I mean. But like, damn, being up at three thirty in the morning every day, you know, probably missing some family events, not seeing some of your friends for a while, you know, stuff like that. Was there any ever a time where you're just like, you know what, maybe this whole thing isn't for me? Um, not enough. I'm going to be honest, good. like yeah, yeah, good. enough for like, like maybe I felt like that when I was on my way driving somewhere or like getting ready or feeling super tired, yeah. but the, it's, it's worth it because every time that I'm actually like there, like on the scene, whether it be like on a carpet or at a business, like getting ready to like do the morning show, like it's, it all goes away. Yeah, it yeah. honestly all it's goes awesome. away because you meet these awesome people that it's like, Oh, this is why I love my job. Yeah. This is why it's so good. And there can yeah. be the most BS that's going on behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And it's like all of it sincerely goes away. And you're like, this is why I love my job. Yeah, and yeah, you yeah. walk away after or they'll say like, this just made my day. Or this was like the best experience. Or this really changed the way that I look. Like mm -hmm. I learned something new or yeah. like that is the ultimate for me. That's why yeah. it keeps me going. And like, it er it's like I have amnesia. <laughs> it's like <laughs> all of it goes it just away. Just went away. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I wanted to ask you about um, the difference between um, what you did at ET and then and, and breakfast television as well. I know one was um, it was more live, right? Breakfast television yeah. was li yeah. live on yeah. air, right? So uh, how was that for you? Like making that transition, and now you're just kind of. Do you improvise? 
Is that, yeah. Is that what yeah, you're, you're improvising everything, it, right? right? Yeah, every so I it's it was a huge change. Yeah, like massive from uh, ET Canada is very like uh, magazine scripted where yeah. everything everything is literally scripted yeah. and written um, because that's the style of the show. It's it's a magazine entertainment show yeah. where like BT is fresh raw television yeah, and that's yeah, always yeah. what like they're known for. Yeah. And what's great is that like anything could happen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I'll never my very first day. I was so nervous. I was yeah. with Frankie Flowers. <laughs> God bless him. <laughs> and uh, and I had said to the producer at the time, I was like, because they were kind of like introducing me slowly because I had never even done like on air completely. Yeah. Never mind like live. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> so it was a lot of trust. Uh, yeah, and so saying. I said, whatever you do for the first kind of live eye that we do, please don't give me animals or babies because they're so unpredictable. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. don't know what's gonna happen to them. It's like another true. layer of like yeah. nervousness that yeah. I like didn't want to deal with. Yeah. So I was like, I'm just gonna try like not to swear of and course. smile the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. and ask questions yeah. and not be like, yeah. back yeah. to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, I just don't want to have a moment like that. Yeah. And she was like, okay, perfect. So we're going to the spring fest where we're gonna have live eagles, which I hate birds. You're gonna hold <laughs> them and we're gonna have a kids dance party oh, so with everything. 30 oh, kids nice. and a DJ. And I was like, nice. Nice. Perfect. I can't wait. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Guys, yeah. Yeah. Like, this That's is gonna be a great yeah. start. That's crazy. But uh, I didn't have it one of those well. moments back to you, yeah, so yeah. it was okay. I'm, I'm, cu I'm actually curious what and if there even was an interview what is the interview process like to be somebody on live television for bt like do you have to do any like in in front of the camera type stuff like what does that look like if you're allowed to say i don't think i'm yeah. not allowed to okay say, yeah, but, yeah good. Um, then, i know every place is different yeah every spot is different and i mean everybody has their different processes of how they do things but right. for me personally uh, the EP had seen a lot of my work online okay. um, because 3D Canada, like I had some online stuff that I was doing like bachelor recaps and uh, fashion videos and, and whatnot. So she knew that I could speak on air like cool. in and deliver th um, information. Mm, yeah. um, and then I met with her. We went to France for a coffee nice. and we nice. sat for about two hours. And then she said, okay, I need you uh, just like getting to know me really yeah. was was what it was about cool. and she said okay well like i like you so uh <laughs> send me your demo reel and i'm going to present you you're one of like four other people that were presenting to the vps of rogers cool and um and so i'll let you know and then yeah she, she let, let you me know. know yeah <laughs> and i was That's like amazing. seriously you sure this isn't a mistake she's yeah. like no <laughs> okay so you didn't have to like do anything yeah. live it wasn't like an no, audition it wasn't like an like, audition like that yeah. but i know they they do do that though yeah okay i was just curious that. i'm like it's, every must process be... is a bit different yeah, uh, sure. that was my um experience did yeah. you call your teacher right after that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <should> <laughs> hey, i hope you're listening right now <laughs> i hope you're listening <laughs> mister i wanted to get into just the topic of confidence because i i feel like you're a very confident person and you've always been that way ever Thanks since I met you. Um, just the way you carry yourself, the way you speak, uh, when you're in front of others, when you're on TV, wherever you are in an event, you're very confident, right? So um, I feel like confidence is a thing that is tough for people to grasp nowadays, especially our generation with, with the amount of media pushing us to be a certain way, right? Insecurities and stuff like that. So how is it that you've been able to stay so confident um, in that industry as well? Do you have any tips for people? Because I think people can take those tips no matter what industry they're in. I think confidence is something that can propel you to keep growing. So I think confidence is huge for you. I, I, that's what I notice when I, when I see you. So um, what are some things that keep you confident and, and maybe some tips for people? Uh, I listened to a podcast not that long ago, and I forget the name, but the it was with Mark Shapiro, and they discussed the um, idea that, like, you can't necessarily fake it till you make it. Yeah. Like, I know that's like a saying that a lot of, of people use. Yeah. But basically, he was saying that to be confident, it takes courage. Yeah. It takes courage to like put yourself out there and put yourself in that position. And it really stuck with me. And I thought to myself, like, that's such an accurate statement because, yeah. and that like, the, I think courage means even more than confidence yeah. because there's there's bravery that's involved in that, and there's a sense of like of the failure, right? Of not of that not being received. And I think that's what a lot of people feel. That's yeah. what, I mean, I know I felt that yeah. in my life and I'm sure a lot of other people struggle with yeah. is, um, and especially like having the courage to put yourself out there 
uh, takes a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, don't get me wrong. Like I have cried. I've yeah. gotten comments and things back where yeah. I'm like, oh, this is so mean. Yeah. And then I try and like laugh it off. I'm, yeah. I'm a pretty like easygoing, <laughs> yeah. positive person. Yeah. And the one thing I always say that makes me feel better is that, wow, someone took three seconds yeah. or maybe longer <laughs> to construct this yeah. mean comment yeah. yes yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. it's true. that's how long it's you thought true, of me yeah. that i pissed you off for but it's like trying to like just spin it you know yeah. It's, yeah. and yeah, yeah. it's the idea that like you have to be have the courage to know who you are yeah. know that like about your intentions your values your worth and not having anybody else yeah. um weigh in on that you yeah. know and if you're if you feel so sure in that then it doesn't matter what anyone else says. Yeah. Yeah. That's like the most important in life. Like it yeah. doesn't matter if you're in a relationship and work. It's like you need to have courage and and like know your abilities, your capabilities, your intent. Like because some people will read things differently or yeah. some people may interpret things differently. But if you know who you are at the end of the day, that's the most important thing yeah. because everyone's going to have something to say <laughs> about it. Stay anybody. true to yourself. I yeah. agree. Yeah, right. no, I think it was on, on It's Simple, another podcast that uh, our buddies, some guy came on and he said, the only the only time hateful comments hurt you is when you're unsure of yourself. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. it. Yeah. I, I fully believe that. And, and that's credit to my parents for like raising my brother and I to be like strong individuals. Yeah. Not We're not perfect. And yeah, you have moments of low for sure. But I credit that courage and confidence from them for sure of course um i want to talk about the pandemic a little bit yes okay um so sorry what our I've favorite our, our what? favorite what topic here our favorite topic here for the last um, five episodes so let's 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 go back in time um ever then i guess the news hits um the lockdowns start to begin all the news gets out the new guidelines start coming out all this stuff um what's happening at breakfast television during that time freak out yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course nice, right? yeah that's truly what it was yeah. i mean we were in the same boat as everybody else of yeah. like receiving the news at the same time as everybody else and it was like okay like how does the show go on yeah. how do we continue to do this because they're essential right yeah and um and i was freaking out <laughs> the most because i wasn't necessarily essential because i was out in the community yeah, yeah. i really so wholeheartedly believed that that voice was important of course. because I felt like I had, <laughs> this sounds so like patriotic, and, <laughs> yeah. but like the voice of the people, yeah. you know, it's yeah. like, it's like I hate how yeah. that sounds, no, it's true. It's but true. it's like, I felt like I was, I really wanted to take that on to like show like in, in like different from the news. Yeah. Like there are people that are that are suffering, whether it's from sickness or, or their business suffering or yeah. their family. And, and I was the one that had the direct line to those yeah. people because yeah. I put myself out there. To you were do really that. the only one showing it, though, right. too, your channel, because right? it, because we fought for it. Yeah. Or not yeah. so. wow. It wasn't it wow. wasn't yeah. something that was just like you guys should yeah, keep yeah, doing keep it. it. Yeah. No, no, wow. no. Mm. It was it was a fight to mm. to push like <laughs> people need this. Yeah. We need to show this to people yeah. Yeah. because who we're showcasing is who's watching the show. Yeah. And it's important that they see that represented because then like you lose the attachment. Yeah. You'll lose that feeling. Why yeah. am I watching? Like yeah. new, news is essential. We need to know what's going on a hundred percent. But at the same time, during all of this, there needs to be relief too. Yeah. There needs to be human interaction. And when that was cut off from everything, that's the only human interaction that we're trying to give to people, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's like, yeah we fought so hard for that always and yeah. right at the beginning though we didn't know how to do that so i was like homebound and yeah. it was like you're gonna stay here until we figure out what's gonna happen yeah. and i was like okay we can zoom we can do this we're trying to figure out technology we're trying to figure out like if we do pre-tape things then or we air them or if i do it by myself and then we flip it around or like with a mask and yeah. with the pole. We were one of the first ones to do before like the hockey stick. The hockey stick, hockey stick I was like, or wasn't that the first one? We were yeah. one of the first ones because <laughs> yeah. my cameraman is is like always figures like technically he's like the man that yeah. can fix all. Yeah, I, yeah. I literally say that. Mr. Fix it. And we were starting. To, so okay, first it said the rules were you need to be six feet apart. That's how it first started. Yeah. Right. So, okay. Six feet apart. We're holding your hand out like this with a microphone. And then it was like, no, no, people online are saying that it looks too close. And I was like, yeah, but what is on camera looks different yeah. than what's in your physical ability. So it was like, okay, you have to call out that you're standing. I was like, okay, sure, we're gonna do it that way. Yeah. And then it was, 
No, you need to actually demonstrate that you're six feet apart. So we're like, okay, like let's do the pole thing. Yeah. He like taped, <laughs> taped the microphone <laughs> to, to the, the pole. pole. My oh arms my were God. jacked yeah. for a solid for a solid <laughs> month. Like, yeah. Okay, I was like, oh. And sometimes there were long winded dancers. I was like, sweating. Yeah. You see the sweat dripping down my face in the middle of winter, but it's fine. And uh, and then afterwards, it was like, no, you need to be further away and wear masks. So then we're wearing masks and then the, no one's like, we can't understand that what you're yeah, saying because yeah. your voice is all yeah. muffled. And that mm -hmm. was the whole thing. Yeah. And then we put a microphone on a stand. So anytime I interviewed someone, I was like, so you're going to feel like Britney Spears for the day <laughs> and you can grab it if you want, yeah. but make sure you wear gloves and yeah. you have to wear your mask. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then we weren't allowed to go inside. And then it was like, and then we were home and then yeah. we went back and, yeah. and then I wasn't allowed to interview anybody live. So it was like, I was giving t nature tours and like, <laughs> <laughs> I just honestly, I think back, it was such a roller coaster. Yeah. And like, I know, like, I was so privileged to still be able to work, and I don't take that for granted yeah, yeah. one bit. But when I say, like, like the roller coaster of emotions of like frustration and sadness, and like yeah. moments of like, just like you give up, like, like everybody else, yeah. Yeah. we felt the exact same way as for we're sure. trying to like put a smile on and try and start people's days off on a of really course. bright note. And, and, and wow. I'm curious mm -hmm. now because I know you're saying kind of like, as the news came in, you guys kind of put it out, right? And to whatever extent. So I'm, I'm curious when all this news came in and it was all like brand new, right? Or to whatever extent, you know, when anything new came in about COVID, the pandemic and whatnot, um, obviously the news puts it out in whatever way they feel best. But from a viewer's perspective, it didn't always feel like it was real journalism. Mm -hmm. and, and to the extent of like that, it didn't feel as if, um, they were giving it from a neutral standpoint. A lot of the times it sort of felt maybe it was ge geared one way or the other, not whichever way it is, it is what it is. But my question to you is like, as the news who's giving out some pretty sensitive information, do you feel like maybe there should have been some more like, Hey, hold on, let's actually like maybe dig a little deeper here before we just like put this out just because of how sensitive the information is now, whether it's about people's health people's businesses, you know, yeah. what, wh whoever it was affecting in whichever, in whichever way it was. Cause I feel like, look, like you said, like the people who watch the news, they watch it like religiously. Yeah. And it's like, whatever is said on the news is like, this is what it this is. is. The law. This yeah. is the law. Right. And, and, and not necessarily saying that the, you know, the news is coming out and saying, Oh, this is the law. This is what it is. But did you ever think maybe like just sometimes, and it could be really about anything, not even just COVID and the pandemic that things were just put out a little quickly like without more research on the back end done? Like what, what are your thoughts on that? Cause I, obviously you were in the environment. If anyone's yeah. gonna know, it's you. Yeah, for sure. I, uh, like I said, like I'm not in the news, but I mean, we're included in it as yeah. a whole and we talk about it in our meetings. And it was very much, I wanna say like, okay, first off, I wouldn't say breakfast television as like a news entity, like city news, like really does like, I want to say like a, a really great job at trying to be like objective and yeah. trying to like deliver it as it is. Yeah. I, like I've seen the processes and in comparison to other places as well, like I think they, they do a really excellent job at, at doing that. However, I will say that like, like everybody else, like they're being told by the government, things are not going to get better unless this, this, and this is done. So like, we have a response, like we, as I say, like of news yeah. Yeah. has a responsibility to push that so that things get better. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like worthy. It's almost like, and I, I know there's no like affiliation because they're still objective, but at the same time, like when the health minister of Canada is saying like, nothing's going to happen unless you do this. Yeah. It's like they assumed the responsibility to then enforce that. Yeah. That's that's okay. the it's like, thing. Look at that person. They're saying this. Now we gotta portray exactly, it. Yeah. Yeah. exactly. That makes that, sense. Though. That was the mentality, and yeah. that was always like the conversation too. It was yeah. like, let's not scare people. Like we need to make sure that we have we're outlining the facts. Like we're gonna try and get them on the show, yeah. so that when we release this headline, people aren't freaking out, mm -hmm. but have other questions. And they did a really good job too at including viewers into those questions too. Like they would do call-ins in the show yeah. where people could call, speak to the doctor firsthand, be like, "Okay, so I don't understand this. Why is this like this?" And I don't understand. And a lot of the time too, the doctor would say, "You know what? Like this is all we know right now. Yeah. This is this is like." But to hear that firsthand is different than reading a headline or that's, like seeing it, you know? Well, it's, that, that's why I'm asking. It's different, 100% Because I feel different. like even like what you, you were saying. You can do all that you can, like the best that you can. Yeah. But when 
when something's written a certain way, they're going to interpret it a certain way. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Yay media. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, what Love do you, it. Okay. What do you think about the, the future of, let's say, mainstream media, let's say news channels? I'm going to give an example. There's Fox News and there's CNN. Okay. <laughs> they, American, they are two American. opposites. <laughs> yeah. They both showcase their biases at any point in time, any, mm. any, any chance they get. Okay. Um, and I think because of that, there are a lot of people nowadays that are looking towards things like podcasts to learn to learn about news or to learn about different perspectives so what do you think about the mainstream media uh, and where do you think that they're headed if they continue let's say in this direction where they're kind of like battling each other now instead of like for the people mm -hmm. they're supposed to be just for the people but now it's like they're going head to head, to head against each other right so what do you think what do you think is going to happen in the future do you think that um it's something that is going to keep going this way and and no one's going to really listen or trust them anymore yeah uh so it's a great question. Yeah. I mean, being someone who has seen it firsthand and, yeah. and been in it, it's like the biggest threat. Yeah. Every yeah. day, it's like, are we going to still have, like, are the lights going to turn off? Yeah. Are they yeah. Yeah. And, it's, and it's not to say, like, no one's confident in what they do, but it's like the world changing. Yeah. It's yeah. the world developing in a way that is digital. Like, yeah. that's where everything is moving to. Yeah. And that's why a lot of stations and companies and organizations are trying to play like catch up. Like I feel like this last year was that more than anything yeah, of companies yeah. trying to figure out, okay, how do we pivot? Adapt, Another favorite yeah, word. Adapt, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And adapt online because that's what everyone's watching. Like yeah. people, like when we couldn't even just like simplifying things to like movies. Yeah. When you you can't go to the movies now, everyone streams everything. Yeah. Like, are the movies still going to be a thing? Are yeah. blockbuster openings still going to be a thing? Yeah. I don't know. It doesn't yeah. seem that way. Yeah. Tough, yeah. I like. Yeah, I don't think the like the value that will ever change because it's a whole experience. Of but people are going to go for the experience, yeah. not yes. to see the movie. Because like yes. you can yeah. see the movie from your couch yeah. and yeah. have like a steak dinner instead of eating popcorn. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. But but that's like why you go to the movies. Yeah. So, I mean, and, and that's the same with your news. Like yeah. if you don't want to listen to it because it's say too intense for you, yeah. which mm -hmm. is something that I experienced yeah. funny enough. Yeah. I don't like listening to the news. I'd rather read it. Yeah. I'd rather open my phone and like read an article yeah. super quick yeah. that I can like get in exactly what I need or go on Twitter and figure things out and and then close it when I need to. Yeah. I don't li need to listen to a 10 minute broadcast. Yeah. Do you yeah. know what I mean? No, but for but sure. But I think the, I mean, our generation more than ever are the yeah. ones like fostering that and like pushing that. And yeah. I think like, I th really think like if TV organizations like don't really catch up or invest in these digital concepts yeah. that like they will die. Look yeah. at magazines. Yeah. Well, we That's exactly we why Nick so too. many have died. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. Radio too. We were talking radio. about well, well, what, what do you well, think? Well, that's why so many radio stations are doing podcasts now. They're doing podcasts right? now, right? Well, yeah. well how, do, how do you think a news station like uh, breakfast television, like CP24, any, like we'll talk Canadian. Yeah. How do you think any of them, how do they get their foot in this space? How do they start to um, adapt, garner, yeah. garner and adapt? and adapt and, and garner attention from the younger generation. Cause I feel like it's like, there's, yeah. a, there's a gap. It's like, yeah. you're like 45 and up, you may watch the news, but like f 40 and, and below or whatever, like I never watched news. I can't tell you a time that I ever did watch yeah. the news. Like honestly, yeah. right? I'm 25 um, and I've never watched the news. And I, I really don't plan on it because it's not entertaining yeah. to me. And I, and I don't know if I trust what I'm hearing all the time. So how do they start to gain trust with the younger community? What, what do you think? Like, how, how do you think is, is the step? Like, what do you think the steps are for them? They need to talk to people like you. Yeah. And like, <laughs> yeah. and like hey, ask, let me know. Like, hey, hey, like, hey like, let me know. <laughs> they need to ask. Okay, like, what are you looking for? Why don't you watch it? And then yeah. like target their, the way that, it's going to be the same information at of the course. end of the it's day. Just it's be the way that you present it. Yeah. Exactly. For sure. No, no, which it's, is, yeah. It's the creative way that you choose to release this information mm -hmm. yeah. doesn't make it lesser than. Yes. It's just presented in a different way that appeals to a different audience. Yeah. So you need to be smart about it and know what your audience wants. Mm -hmm. If they want quick things, then make it quick. Yeah. Make it snappy. Like, do you know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's like, it's the demo that you need to um, attract. But I also believe to attract the demo, you need to have employees that are the demo because yeah. they know what yes. you want. You yes. And I think yeah. a lot of people are afraid because youth is scary, mm -hmm. uh, they're inexperienced, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, inexperienced yeah. Is, yeah. is what mostly I would say like the younger demos like looked at. It was like, yeah. you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You need five years of experience. Well, yeah. how do I get the five years if <laughs> yeah. you don't give it to me? Like yeah. that's, yeah. that's always been like yeah. so frustrating, yeah. right? I, I understand that because I've been there. but. At the same time, like 
yeah, I hope that people start opening up their minds to thinking, yeah, like hiring a 22 year old fresh out of school, like, yes, they're like fresh out on like TikTok and all these new apps and they're trendy and they know what people want. And that is what's going to bring in that audience because they're going to know how to get them. Yeah. That's what I think it starts from that. I agree. And then you couldn't even argue like even like above that and above that of of like upper management having like a younger Younger person involved. Yeah. 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 It's that's it's not the that's way it works. That's, 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 that's a lot of industries. Though. Yeah. There's like you know upper upper management is is more old school in a lot of industries yeah. and and you I, know. and you need that. Yeah, you do because you do need that they experience. Have, they, have they have the experience. The they have yeah. the they have the expertise yeah. and the knowledge of like uh, of the beginning. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Yes. But I also think I'm really like support like new blood and and mm. you need that yeah. to keep things fresh and moving and well coming from innovating. where you came from too as an intern too like that's that's how you came in you came yeah. in as an intern yeah, yeah. I think I think there's that and I think like yeah. obviously I think our generation like the like the younger the 22 23 24 25 year olds we look a little different too we're tattooed, tattooed <laughs> on our hands you know like our generation's very like yeah. I'm just talking about like. me and him right now <laughs> no, no 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 we're a lot I got more one. you can't <laughs> see you it that's we're, all we're a lot more ta- you know what I mean I feel like even but the yeah. way we look like I don't know if the news is gonna be willing to put somebody let's say like me for example on that's not presentable maybe yeah yeah like because I feel like is there even a standard like what's that because the demo that's watching it right is now it, isn't gonna, are the people yeah. who don't understand mm-hmm. that yeah mm-hmm. Do you if know what I mean? The demo was all you. So but unless, how do you go exactly. on? But how so do you unless you start, int- you have to introduce us yeah. slowly. Yeah. Change yeah. is hard for people. Yeah, of course. We know yeah. that firsthand. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Change yes. is really hard for people to yes. accept. So yeah. it's like about doing it slowly and yeah. smartly. Mm-hmm. Fair. Yeah. Fair. Hey, BT, whoever, let me know. <laughs> I'm, I'm here. Hey, eh? I'm good for a segment or two. You just let me know. Yeah, I got some. I got some questions from. I, I put out that story yesterday. Oh and no! Some people, some people, <laughs> no, we're not. We're not. We're, gonna, we're gonna skip anything spicy. Okay. Let's get spicy. Um, <laughs> we have something from Aaron Elizabeth uh, Elizabeth Moss. Okay. Beth Moss. Aaron Elizabeth, Elizabeth Moss. Moss. Wow. Are you okay? Yeah, sorry. It's <laughs> a fucking run on sentence. Yeah. That's why you're not on TV, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's why. No, you're on Disney. <laughs> there you go. Done. I'm okay. um, What have you been working on since leaving BT? I miss your face and energy in the mornings. Oh, that's really sweet. Yeah, that is beautiful. That's always like really, really nice to hear. It, it really means a lot. Yeah. Um, I miss it too. A yeah. lot. I yeah. really do. Um, but right now, I'm working on myself nice. for, Love like, that. the first time ever. I was going to say, um, you've got some time now. <laughs> yeah, but I've always been, like, running around yeah. doing all the things, and I've never really had a chance to figure out, okay, like, what do I want in life and mm-hmm. what do I want to do moving forward? One of the first things I did is, like, kind of t- check myself mentally, yeah. honestly. Like, yeah. I, like, went to talk to a few different people and was, like, self-reflective of the things I need to work on to be my best self the best version of myself yeah. and that's something i think well i was always like afraid to do but i also i don't have time for that yeah, you course. know it's, yeah, it's yeah, exactly. so easy to do that yeah, yeah. um but i think it's like the best thing that i did and i felt like for the first time like i have like a clear direction you know and i was able to establish that and i'm and that's what i'm working on so i'm working on my own brand developing my own brand and nice. i'm working on my own show and nice. um, okay, okay. and I'm really excited about the future and cool. what's what's coming down the pipeline. A lot of different things that, but now that I have the time, like I can kind of dip my toe in yeah. different things, which yeah. I'm really excited about because yeah. before I was like so busy that of I course. didn't have the opportunity. So yeah. uh, it's really nice to be able to do what I want. Yeah, yeah. maybe there a podcast. <laughs> maybe a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, another one here. Um, why did you leave BT? I miss watching you every morning. Oh, at, at who? At who? yeah. Who's that from? This <laughs> is from, this is is from at Kristen Conti. Oh, Kristen. I have so I, I really feel terrible because I've been asked this question so many times. I can't even <laughs> tell you the amount imagine, of times. I and I know my goodbye <laughs> was very vague um, and I still can't comment. Fair. But what I will say is that everything happens for a reason. And I'm in a good place. Yeah. That's, that's, that's my favorite matters. answer. Yeah. That's, that's, all that's all my answer to everything. <laughs> <laughs> I answered everything. <laughs> everything it's for a true reason. though. It's no, true. It's and true. you might not know it at the time. Yeah. Uh, because sometimes things are hard and you're like, oh, freak out. Yeah. Freak yeah. out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and you like that. Like, that's my little dumb that's your little, yeah. little, yeah. little, little We need the button. We But yeah, things come full circle. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There's one more question here I want to ask. It's from Johal underscore esk um if oh, yeah. you could be a fly on the wall who would you want to listen in on oh. Ooh, that's like so that tough 
I know that's a really like it's a, kind of a broad question, but I'm actually just curious now. Um, like dead or alive? Anybody? Yeah, go for it. It'd be really weird <laughs> if you're listening to a dead. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not like back in time, yeah. like going back in time. Okay, oh, easy there. Fucking hell, Dean. <laughs> fucking hell, Dean. <laughs> um, okay. So if Weber was like to go back in time, <laughs> back in time <laughs> when they were alive, yeah. <laughs> I just, would just say you <laughs> I would love to be a fly on the wall and meet uh, Princess Diana. Wow. Nice. I would love. And then the other person today that would love to be a fly on the wall is Jennifer Lopez. Wow. Nice. Like, is she back with She's Ben? Back with What's ben. happening? Back with Ben. Back. Like, what was the drama with later. A Rod? I want to know all of it. I know. I, th- I, thought, <laughs> I thought they were getting married for sure. I, th- I thought that was she, like. She's come very close a few times. Yeah. yeah. And then shocks the world. <laughs> hey, listen, shout out. She's like 50 <laughs> yeah, and ever do a living her life. Yeah, like, living her think. best life. <laughs> I can't hate on it. I don't hate on it. Same, same. You ready, for the, you ready to ask her the main question here? Yeah, oh. okay. Listen, we are the MBH podcast, Money Buys Happiness. When you hear the term Money Buys Happiness, what do you think? I think I'm gonna sh- hold on. I want to make sure I <laughs> yeah, say the yeah, right yeah, thing yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, please. I think <laughs> this is gonna sound bad. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. All right, done. Let me explain. No, 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 no. <laughs> We're finished. <laughs> I Cut. think, I think yes, because money gives you opportunities and gives you um, also a different worldview. Uh, yeah, I think because you're exposed to more things when yeah. you when you have that ability. Things cost money. It's the way the world works, right? Yeah. Do I th- and when you have sorry, so then translating this is like when you have more opportunities and things like yeah, it can make you happy because it can expose you to things that yeah. you never thought possible, right? Um, do I think that you can also have a lot of money and still never be happy? Absolutely, you could have all the money in the world and still not be happy. It's like, you yeah. know, yeah. yeah. And we always say it's. So what you do with the money, right? You can have a million yeah. dollars. It's the but opportunities that you make of it or yes, with it. Yes, it's what you do with it. It kind of buys you freedom. Exactly. Like to say. And exactly. freedom is usually happiness. Yeah. Usually. 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 Depends. Usually. Yeah. Because you can be free and alone or not have good health. Yeah. I think it's like money means or like nothing if you don't have your health. Yeah. Like that's number yeah. one to 100%. me always. Because you can have all the money in the world and not have the cure of course. Yeah. for cancer. Of course. Like, do you know what I mean? I agree. So yeah, it depends yeah. on the instance, but I completely agree. Good answer. Good we're, answer. we're still going to cut it at just yes. <laughs> but <laughs> just gonna th- thank you for we're that. Gonna we're going to make a real. We're going to make a real and just do the yes <laughs> part. Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> yes, done. Perfect. It's going to be free spray. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, Nicole, we appreciate you coming on. Yes, yes. Um, I know we've been trying to do it, but we're probably going to get you back here too because we're going to see what you're you're getting up to and, and um, what you have in store for the future. Awesome. You know, but Thank it's been you a pleasure. So much. Likewise, yeah. you guys are yeah, awesome. This Thank was you. so nice and so fun, and I really feel honored to be sitting with you too. Thank you. Awesome, so appreciate Thank that. Thank you, and I hope I get to come back. You yeah, will, we'll you have will. you back. Right. We'll have you, you back. It was a good one. I appreciate I didn't it. Blow this, right? No, no, no good, shot. good. No <laughs> edits, but it's okay. Well, actually, just one edit. But, <laughs> anyways, with that being said, Dean, we out.